In this lecture, we want to now talk about the concept of correlation. And in the previous lecture, what we saw is we, want, we were looking at the relationship between two variables. And what we want to do now with correlation is we want to measure the strength of this relationship. OK. You know, like, how strong is this, is this linear relationship that might exist between two variables? OK, so here's where we were um, last class. We, were, we had this data set here. And what we saw was we first had to define the two variables. We had what was called the explanatory variable, which is the x variable, which we denote as hours of study. and our response variable, which we denoted as y, was the exam score here. And what the scatter plot showed us, and let me load that scatter plot up so you can see it. You know, from our calculator, you should still have this plugged in your calculator from the previous lecture. It looked like there was a positive linear relationship here. Okay, so that begs the question then is how strong is this linear relationship, this positive linear relationship? So to measure the strength of a linear relationship, we use what's called the linear correlation coefficient right here, linear correlation coefficient, or sometimes it's called the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. I'll always just call it the linear correlation coefficient or the correlation coefficient. And this um, is a measure of the strength and direction, and I'll explain that, of the linear relationship between two quantitative variables. There's two uh, linear correlation coefficients. There's when you get the Greek letter rho, all right, this is a population correlation coefficient, so this is a parameter. But we're just going to use the letter r to represent the sample correlation coefficient. Remember, this is a statistic. Okay, because in this for this type of stuff, we're only going to look at um, uh, sample data. Okay, so what I'm going to show you next is the formula for the sample correlation coefficient, and I want to talk about it for a second. So to calculate this, this sample uh, linear correlation coefficient r, it's the sum of each x value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation times each y value minus the, the mean of the y values divided by the standard deviation of the y. Once you figure out what that sum is, you divide by n minus 1. Okay, This, and remember n is the sample size, this formula, it's, it's a crazy hard formula. So for these type of problems, we won't do this by hand. Okay, we'll always use technology to find the value of r. Okay, and in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to use your uh, graphing calculator, how to do this. So I encourage you as I'm working through this lecture is to um, have your graphing calculator out and, and kind of follow along. All right, but first off, what are some properties of this linear correlation coefficient? All right, the first one, the most important, the linear correlation coefficient is always going to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive, meaning that it means it can be a negative 1 or it can be 1. And it can be any number in between those two. It could be negative 1, it could be negative 0.5, it could be 0, it could be 0 0.25, and it could be 1. Okay, But you will never calculate this and see it be a value like 5 or negative 7. It's always going to be between negative 1 and 1. If r is equal to plus 1, there is perfect positive linear relationship that exists between the two variables. What this means is when you look at the scatter plot, it'll be like a perfect straight line. So we that's not really going to happen in the examples we look at in this class. Um, but, and generally, it, it, it doesn't really happen in too many real world examples. Similarly, if r is equal to negative 1, then there's a perfect negative linear relationship that exists between the two variables. So the scatter plot of this would just be a perfect straight line with a, with a negative slope. OK, if r is closer to positive 1, the stronger the evidence of positive association between the two variables, like if it's like 0.9 or 0.8. And if r is close to negative 1, the stronger the evidence of a negative association between the two variables. 
Okay, if r is close to zero, then little or no evidence exists for, and this is important, of a linear relationship between the two variables. Okay, so r close to zero does not imply no relation, just that there's no linear relationship. Okay. And finally, the linear correlation coefficient is unitless measure of association. So the unit of measures of x and y plays no role in the interpretation of r. So there's no, we don't, you know, it's just a number. There's no units associated with it. And so what do different values of this correlation coefficient look like um, looking at the scatter plot? So I hinted at these two already or gave these two already. This is a perfect positive linear relationship. It's just the straight line perfect here. This is r is equal to 1. And this is an example of r is equal to negative 1. Okay. Perfect positive, perfect negative. When you look at these two, now let's look at r is equal to 0 0.9 and r is equal to negative 0 0.9. You can see the definite pattern sloping upward here. There's a definite trend in the data. It's pretty close together in that way, going upward. Negative, negative 0 0.9, you can see it's sloping down like this. It's not a perfect straight line, but it's, the pattern is there. So what you can see here is a positive values tell that it's a positive association, and negative values of R mean it's a negative um, association between the variables. Looking here, r is equal to 0 0.4 and negative 0 0.4. You can still see the patterns here of the data, but the data is much more spread out, okay? Like it's not as in, in, in a nice, tight, narrow band like these two were, okay? And then finally, here's two examples of r being close to 0 here. Here, there's no relationship between the, 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 the x and y variable. And here, there is a relationship is just nonlinear. So R, remember, only measures linear relationship. So this won't pick up um, uh, this this won't pick up the nonlinear relationship. Okay, let's move on. So I'll, I want to show you now how to find R. Um, using your graphic calculator because this value of r um, you don't want to find this by hand looking back at this formula it just it looks too too crazy to do by hand okay so to do this in your calculator the first thing you need to have and, and this in the background here is how you would do this on a ti-83 uh, i'm going to um uh, show you how to do this on a TI-84 emulator here, but it's the same options with the TI-83. So the first thing you need to make sure is that under stat and you edit the list, uh, you, you have your data plugged into the calculator. So I have this plugged in from the previous example. Now what you need to do next is you need to change a default setting on your calculator. So you need to go second function, you need to go to the catalog option here, and you need to scroll down to the D's. And if you actually press this X inverse button, you see how there's the D there? It takes you to the D's. And you need to turn on something called diagnostic on. Diagnostic on, right there. So I'm going to hit enter, enter, and you should see that it says done. Great. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to hit stat. You're going to go over to calc. And you want option number four. You want this Linreg AX plus B. And we're going to hit enter. If you have a TI-83, you're just going to hit enter again. With the, you're just going to say Linreg AX plus B, just hit enter. If you have the TI-84, scroll down to calculate. And you should see something like this right here. Okay. In the, previous, in the coming lectures, I'll explain what A and B represent here. R squared is what we call the coefficient of determination. We're not going to study that in this class, um, but it just it's the percentage of variation in the y variable that's explained by the variation in the x variable. But what we're interested in is this r value. That's our linear correlation coefficient, and we see it's 0 0.9943. And so this is close to 1. So there's evidence of a positive linear relationship, which is exactly what we thought um, when we looked at the uh, scatter plot.
okay? But now we're actually just measuring the strength. Wow, that's really close to positive one. There's really strong evidence of that positive linear relationship. All right, let's do another example here. Um, and just so you can see how to do this in your calculator again. So um, I have these two variables. I'm not gonna initially tell you what they are, but let's just assume that variable one is my X variable, my explanatory, and variable two is my Y, my response variable. Okay, so I wanna look at the scatter plot, describe the relationship, and calculate R. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take this data and you're gonna plug it back into your calculator. So you're gonna to go to the stat button. Under number one, you're gonna edit the list. You're gonna to scroll to the top of the list. You're gonna hit clear, enter. Top of the list, clear, enter. And it's a little arduous here, but let's just start putting these values in here. And it just takes me a little bit on my computer here. So I got all of variable one in here. Now I'm gonna scroll over and, and, and put in the corresponding values for the variable two. Just taking a little bit here. And got it in there. Okay, so what are you gonna do now? I'm just gonna make sure my stat plot is on. So I'm gonna go second function, stat plot. It says plot one dot 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 on, and it has the scatter plot there listed. So I'm gonna hit the zoom button, and I want number nine, the zoom stat here. And you see this. Now it's not perfect, but you can for sure see the trend, right? It looks like there's a positive linear relationship between the variables here. There's definitely some positive association. All right, so we got the scatter plot. Here it looks like there's a positive linear relationship. All right, and let's calculate R here. So to do that again, remember you're gonna hit the stat button. You're gonna scroll over to calc and you want option number four, this LINREG option right here. So you're gonna scroll down to calculate or on the T83, just hit enter again. And look, you get 0 0.9471 when I round it, okay? So I'm just going out four decimal places. Okay, so this again is very close to positive one. So there's strong evidence of a positive linear relationship. Okay, that's great. But now let me actually tell you what the variables are. So what I'm putting here is a year number, uh, uh, the year actually of each of these corresponding variables. So there, this is time series data here. And what variable one is, is per capita cheese consumption. In pounds. Okay, so this is, so what I'm saying here is in 2000 on average Americans consumed 29.8 pounds of cheese. And then by 2009, it was up to 32.8 pounds of cheese. And a uh, variable two is uh, the number of deaths by being tangled in bed sheets. It seems like a funny variable, but it's actually a sad one. It's actually a lot of like infants getting tangled in bed sheets. Um, but so what's going on here is, do you think there's any, an, an actual real relationship between per capita cheese consumption and deaths by bed sheets? Uh, there's no real relationship here. Okay, so what's important to, to note here is that when you have correlation, it does actually does not imply causation. Okay, it doesn't actually mean that there's a causal relationship between the two variables. So how can you have this? What's going on here? 
Um, if you just look at the graphs of these two things, it's just over time, the, the, the two variables are going up. So what, what's going on is there's another variable that's causing both of these variables to go up over time, okay? Not these two being directly related, okay? So another way the two variables can be related even though there is no causal relationship is through what we call a lurking variable. And a lurking variable is related to both the expl explanatory and response variable, and it's just causing them to go up over time. Now, I don't know exactly what the cause is here, but let me give you a different example. All right, so for example, ice cream sales and crime rates have a very high correlation. Okay, so when ice cream sales go up, crime rates go up. Does that mean local government should shut down all ice cream shops? No, the lurking variable here is temperature. So as temperature rises, it turns out that both uh, ice cream sales and crime rates rise. Okay, but you're, if you were to just plot ice cream sales and crime rate, you would see a high rate of correlation between them. All right, so the last topic here is how you test for a linear relationship. So, you know, what if all the values of R we've been calculating have been really, really close to one, but what if they were like 0.8 or 0.7 or 0.6? Like what's a cutoff value for uh, knowing when there's a linear relationship? All right, so the first thing you're gonna have to do is determine the absolute value of the correlation coefficient. Okay, so if it's negative, you're just gonna make it positive. You're gonna find what's called the critical value in the table from our textbook. Okay, I have the link here, but I'll also show you um, the table in the slides to have. And if the absolute value of the correlation coefficient is greater than the critical value, we say a linear relationship exists between the two variables. Otherwise, no linear relationship. So here's what the table of these critical values look like. This is the table from our textbook. Okay, and this is the table that I prefer much better. So what you're gonna do is this table just uses n. From the textbook, you have to use the value n minus two, all right? So notice here, they just say n is three here. That's where this starts. But three minus two gets you one. And notice that the critical values are the same. But here's what you do. Here's how you use this table. All right, going back to our previous, our first example. Okay, so this was the hours of study slash exam score, our first example. Okay, we saw that this was the value of R. What you do then is you go, all right, well, there were eight, um, eight values in our original sample. Okay, so using that table, you go down to eight and you look at the corresponding critical value. So this here is the critical value. So yes, we can say for sure there is a linear relationship. Why? Because the absolute value of R in this case is greater than that critical value. Okay, so as long as my R is greater than this critical value from the table, we can say there is strong evidence of a linear relationship. In this case, we can say that there is strong evidence of a positive linear relationship. All right, class, um, this is just a quick introduction to correlation. We're gonna move into regression next, and then don't worry, we'll do a lot more. There'll be more videos of additional examples showing you how to calculate R and using this table.